Alex, do you have dreams about this? <laughs> like when you're, do you, do you literally have dreams about something going right or something going wrong? I, 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 think, I think all of us, you know, wake up occasionally in cold sweats in the middle of the night <laughs> thinking, oh my God, there's so many things that can, you know, you, again, all of us as, as you know, in our roles have to try as much as possible. Now we know that the story so well, we're now into a mode in the final couple of weeks where we're starting to look at permutations of should this go wrong, what do we do? You know, and have those discussions. And we try, you try and flesh those out as much as possible to a sensible degree. And, <laughs> and sometimes, you know, you'll still hit sideways by things that you could never have predicted on the night go wrong. But you try and have procedures and plans in place um, to multiple levels down, the, the B and the C and the D scenario that you talk through with everyone. Right. And that's, you know, and to a reasonable amount of risk investment so we understand as a team what to do. And that's the next step in this process. You know, now everyone, we're at, we're at this wonderful place now where the cast know the story and their performance is really well. Now we're getting into the logistical planning of the operation and just making sure that we allow ourselves flexibility to deal with the unexpected on the night. And that's what we need to do to pull off the liveness of the event and to make that But it's like, successful. even like yesterday, I had two actors to come about five minutes late because of LA traffic. And we have a little playful thing that we do. When someone's late, everyone does push-ups. So, and I, and I stressed, I said, you are 10 minutes late, but do you realize if you're 10 minutes late on the night, so I have to drill that in them now, you know, if we got rehearsal at 10, you might need to leave home at 6.30, whatever it takes <laughs> to be in place. So we are, we're kind of fit with our push-ups, right? Yeah. <laughs> yes, we are. <laughs> uh, hi, everyone. Um, I just want to say, first of all, as a real Broadway fan, that I, thank you, NBC. Thank you, everyone, for preserving Harvey Firestein's historic, phenomenal performance as Edna Turnbull. For me, <laughs> This is, you know, this is an I know this is going to be a great event, and this is an amazing cast and an amazing show, and I'm glad everyone's seeing it. But for me, that's what it's all about. So, so I'm thrilled. But Harvey, I have a question for you. Um, doing doing the role on stage so many times, the, what's so great about these uh, productions, especially what we saw with Grease Live, was how immersive they can be and how many visuals you can pull off that you could never pull off on stage. So, are there any moments that are really exciting? for you to sort of get to live in as Edna. And then my part B is, how much running around are you gonna be doing on the actual night? So I, there could be a lot of sort of running I'll, around the set. I'll answer B first. A lot! <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I had a moment the other day, you know, when, when Edna's on the phone and she's getting all these calls about Tracy being on TV, and Tracy comes home and says, Mama, come be my agent. She drags me out the door. On stage, the set moved away, and I took three steps, and all of a sudden, it was welcome to the 60s. <laughs> Here they dragged me out a door, down a flight of stairs, up the block, around the corner. I mean, I said, can't you just pull the hot dog cart up to the door? <laughs> so it's, you know, so, so I, and I had this real moment of, because she's an agoraphobic woman, you know, hasn't been out of the house in years. And all of a sudden I walked, and I was walking into the real street, and I was like, Tracy, no. And then there were people coming at me, and all this color, and, and I mean, it was very, like I said, I, I used the word immersive before, and that's what it's like. Um, and, uh, and thankfully, I do have this man here who I trust with my life and this man here. But, to, but this one to keep me really honest. Mm -hmm. And I said, you know, can't just, you know, she's got to be real. Because Alex has a camera up on top of a building two blocks away shooting us. And he also has a camera three inches from my face. You can't be acting. you got to be that character mm -hmm. by then. Can I add to that? Um, one of the beautiful things about this whole time is that we have generational diversity so we have in our cast an 11 year old a 20 year old a 30 year old we have uh, pop artists like Ariana Grande we have um, so we have people from everywhere but to see them in the same room and to see all of them get to know Harvey to get to know that American iconic artistic genius and to learn from him and to see his greatness right there. I don't know if they all would have got that if we had tried to do it on Broadway, but to do this live television musical event, they get to experience that. And it's really a, it's a beautiful thing. And, and please
please let us not forget you have comic geniuses like Andrea Martin. I have Martin Short. Martin Short. We've got Sean Hayes. We have Rosie O'Donnell. We have, I mean, this cast, just look over that cast and say, who is it you don't want to yeah. see do this? I mean, it's going to be so exciting for everyone. Scott Orland. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> perfectly into my question, because one of the people that should be here maybe is the person who is your Excel spreadsheet person to do the talent coordination of who's showing up on what day. Um, I mean, obviously there are people doing different things at different points. When did you have to pull everybody together? Can you kind of break down how you utilize the rehearsal period for the cast? Because people have other commitments. When you needed everybody and then what the trajectory is to the final. Wow. It, it, definitely a, a full-time process in terms of <laughs> <laughs> well, We did have, we had a, 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 a table read with everybody like a long right time the ago. Yeah. And then, now Jerry, you explain the rest of it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, it's, it's tough because there's so much, but the numbers are, it's not like any of the other musicals they've done. All of the principles, which there are 11 of in Hairspray, they, reappear in several numbers. They don't do a number and then come back. They're in several numbers. So we layered it throughout the process. I did, a, I did some pre-production back in New York with dancers to get everything ready and taught. So the minute we stepped on the set here in, in Los Angeles, the dances were all ready to go. So we started adding the principles and we started with the uh, nicest kids in town for a week, then we added the Motormouth Gang for the second week to do the majority of the numbers and the principals started to join us that week and they just all pretty much come together now. So we still have Sean who's coming and Rosie who's coming, who's not here yet, but Billy Eichner, Billy Eichner they're, they're all coming because they're smaller cameos. We, Kristen started today. Kristen started today. And, but I said, Miss Thing, you're Broadway. We work together on Charlie Brown in two days. So she's ready to go. And, so. and what we do, we have great understudies. So they, the idea is to, to layer it and set the tone and everything yeah. as if this is the team going. So the train never stops. Yeah. So as each person comes in, we just slide them in. Let's go. We're not going to go back. We keep going forward. And it's... Work pretty yeah, wonderful so, so far. But it is a, a team effort in terms of coordinating everybody's Ooh, schedule. Absolutely. So, you know, we have a great line producer, we have great uh, ADs and stage management that lays out everybody's schedule and works with Alex and Kenny and Jerry in terms of actually breaking down the script and finding times to fit everything in. Right. Plus, not only are we doing that, but at the same time this year we were recording the album. So we had to back up and get orchestrations ready and we had to schedule studio time for the actors in the midst of them rehearsing. So it, it's like coordinating a, an army. I mean, there's a spreadsheet chart for this press day. Yeah. <laughs> make up ten. It's like this huge poster, so I can only imagine what the whole production looks like. Yeah. Okay, we have time for a few more questions. Uh, at any point through this process in the middle here, oh, okay. um, were the cast told not to see the previous, uh, I'm sure they've seen it, but were they told not to see the previous incarnation? No, of no, it? no. We've actually, we actually shared with them some documentaries of stuff about 1962. You gotta remember, a lot of these kids were born in the 90s. Yeah. Yeah. So they, have no, they have no recollect, they have nothing to draw upon, so we've had to educate them a little bit. 